So uh, it's a great pleasure to invite you all to the seminar today. And uh, it's the first seminar of our, on, our, on our dual mystery channel in this new year. And the first speaker, our first speaker is Olivera Miskovic. Uh, she's now in Chile. She's in, uh, at uh, Valparaiso, a beautiful city. Uh, and uh, she's, she, she's going to talk to us today about uh, black holes uh, with unbroken supersymmetries in Chern Simon's area supergravity. So over to you, Olivera. Thank you very much, Ayan, and uh, thanks a lot for inviting me for this uh, talk. And I hope that uh, you won't regret it, that <laughs> you will enjoy it. Okay, so uh, I know that uh, this channel is uh, about duality. So uh, even though uh, I'm not going directly to apply uh, these results to uh, holography, I just want to point out, uh, in, I prepare a slide where I will point out uh, many interesting features of uh, Chen Simon's uh, gravity and how it could be applied, uh, why, it would, why it is interesting to apply to uh, holography that I plan really to do in future. But this work at the moment is done in collaboration with uh, Laura Andrianopoli from, uh, Polito, from uh, Torino, Gaston Giribet, he's in Buenos Aires at the moment, and a PhD student, uh, Dario Lopez. So uh, a plan of the talk is really uh, simple, uh, uh, apart from, of course, uh, motivation, where I will, I know, I, I assume that you're not familiar with Chen Simon supergravity, that is quite different from uh, uh, standard supergravity, so I would like to give a proper introduction. And please, I would really like, I don't know what is the style here, but I would like to be interrupted uh, during the talk uh, when there are questions and uh, not at the end. Yes, Oliver, we interrupt. Uh, yes, yes, this is, of course, this is my... Uh, solitons and to, to describe its physical properties, uh, mostly topological charge, topological structure and conserved charges, and to say why it is uh, interesting to see. And of course, at the end, there are a lot of open questions. So you see it is a quite uh, simple structure. So why we are interested first in, uh, in a transcendence of gravity? Uh, just imagine that uh, you're interested, in fact, in a quadratic curvature gravity because of holography or any other problem that you want to solve. And, of course, in that case, you're the most interesting in a five-dimensional space because we know that four-dimensional boundaries, uh, that boundary is four-dimensional. And then the simplest case is just to have, uh, like, uh, generalization of uh, general relativity. That means except of Einstein-Hilbert action to add only Gauss-Bonnet term. So let's imagine that uh, we start from that and the ADS radius here, I will uh, mark by L, L0, yes. Okay, so equations of motion of uh, Chen Simons of, uh, sorry, of uh, Einstein-Gauss-Bonnet gravity can be factorized, of course, provided that the coupling constant uh, belong to certain, uh, here you can see that uh, eight uh, alpha or L zero square is larger than one, larger or equal than one, then the equations of motion can be factorized in this way. So what is interesting now that uh, in general, you have two effective anti ride radii. And as long as you are in one of these two branches, for example, if you assume asymptotically ADS condition uh, that uh, belong to one branch or another with effective radius L plus or L minus, then you can regard the Gauss-Bonnet term as a small correction. And in fact, study just quadratic correction to general relativity. But the problem is if you choose Gauss-Bonnet coupling in such a way that 
that uh, this uh, root disappears and L plus is equal to L minus. And then in fact, you have uh, here square of uh, this uh, quantity that is in fact uh, ADS curvature. And then for example, you cannot linearize any longer equation of motion around this pure ADS background. So exactly this point we are in, is the one that we are interested in. This is Trans Simon's coupling point when two vacua coincide and now there is only unique ADS radius that I will call L. And uh, compared to the original uh, Einstein-Hilbert ADS radius, there is some rescaling factor. So oh, sorry, Oliver. I mean, yes. people just joined. Uh, a few more people joined now, so maybe Perfect. it's a good idea to ask some questions. So uh, I oh, just uh, you're uh, welcome. <laughs> so in what dimensions you are in now? So this, I'm this... now. I'm in five. I'm just in five dimensions. Uh, oh, five dimensional radius. Okay. Yes, ah, okay. but you can lift Chen Simon's supergravity in higher dimensions, and if you take the same equation, look story until here is absolutely the same in any dimension. Equations of motions are the same. Maybe here it is, you don't have eight, but you have another factor. But uh, of course, the story until here is the same. However, only if you're in five dimensions, then you have uh, einstein gauss bonnet theory with fixed coupling will become Trans Simon's theory. I will explain what is difference between two cases. But if if I if I interpret it this way, so you have only maximally only pure radius can be a solution, right? Yeah, because yes, yes, yes. But in, in, for now, it is yes, it is pure radius for now. But in general, I mean, you can have another solutions. Now we have pure gravity, and uh, you can have different kind of solutions here and only. In case of pure, I'm, I'm discussing about pure ADS, global ADS uh, space, because it is starting point for discuss, for defining boundary conditions. But yes, I have pure ADS space. I don't have any matter content, but I will show you now how you can introduce them. So I wanted now to point out that uh, this particular point, in fact, uh, is completely different than, or, than original uh, einstein gauss bonnet gravity. And you cannot any longer regard quadratic co correction as small because it changes your solutions, space of solutions drastically. And this can be the best seen if you just take static black holes. This is always the simplest case. And then just to, uh, you ask about dimension here, I just wanted to, emphasize uh, this behavior, but in general, I will always work in five dimensions. This is kind of the only three lines in arbitrary dimension. The point is that if you add uh, different curvatures and you and it, it happened that they have unique ADS vacuum that coincides K times, that means K-fold ADS vacuum, then uh, black holes will change their fall off, you see? So it is not a Schwarzschild solution any longer. And in particular case, when dimension is odd, 2K plus one, uh, then, then in fact, solution will become like uh, really in a way uh, extremal, not, not extremal in like black hole, but extremal in the sense that fall off will become the slowest of, of all. In fact, it will give contribution. Mass will not fall, goes to go, to, mass term will not go to zero at infinity at all. So you- Trans Sorry, Simons, uh, Oliver, this, I, have a, I have a basic question here. So how, how can you get a black hole solution here? Because black hole is not a maximally symmetric space. Whereas, uh, no, Your no, equation. of course I'm not in. I'm not in maximally symmetric space any longer. Of course, I'm just. Uh, this was this was just to define uh, vacuum, to define yeah. uh, ADS radius. But now I take black hole ansatz, so, and you find that the GTT is uh, one over GRR, very similar as to general. No, but maybe I'm misunderstanding something. So the, what you said is this equation of motion tells you that uh, the Ricci, that the Riemann curvature is proportional 
to deltas so, so if you, so this is only true if you have a maximum no no no, no no i'm sorry ah, okay, this, okay, this, this is sorry. just particular solution that's why i yes i call i should call it ground state not a vacuum because vacuum means that there is no matter yes no this is just a ground state hmm. uh, that helps me to define uh, anti deciter radius and why okay. i say that because in fact i have just just let me show you this is important because it is starting point. So I just have uh, Einstein Hilbert plus Gauss Bonnet, and I can choose Gauss Bonnet coupling the way I want. Mm. So if I choose a Gauss generic Gauss Bonnet coupling, avoiding particular critical points, then I can regard the Gauss Bonnet only as a corrections to general relativity. And I can always take, for example, in asymptotic region, uh, black hole will be similar to Schwarzschild black hole. And the only effect of Gauss Bonnet term will be modification of effective anti deciter radius. This is the point. Yeah. However, no, I if I. So, so I'm not looking at maximally symmetric space. For me, it was just the way to show you that there are two branches. I mean, one is this. Uh, uh, Einstein branch where black holes are where you can take alpha tends to zero limit and reduce uh, branch to standard Schwarzschild black hole and another is they call it stringy branch uh, that uh, does not have um, it is a new branch that appear in a Gauss Bonnet theory. So essentially, I, what if I understand correctly, in generally what you would do, you would take the product equal to zero, not the individual terms to be zero, right? In generally. So you're looking exactly. for exactly exactly okay. I will I will see the whole equation of motion I'm not going to start the the individual products exactly. exactly and if you look this at the individual the product then you only get the vacuum okay I mean yes your, you only yeah. take vacuum or if right. you linearize around this vacuum you can just get uh, obtain corrections of yeah. uh, Einstein okay. Einstein theory due to Gauss Bonnet term. Okay, this yes. was my confusion. Okay, that way you're yes, yes, no, pool. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yeah. this is I, I, I should use here the words the, the word the ground state uh, to emphasize uh, that uh, vacuum. Okay, vacuum solution in the sense that there is no matter, but uh, it is not. Uh, it is just ground state one particular solution that correspond to maximally symmetric space. But if we see, if we study black holes that spherically symmetric, that means we are, not, we are not in maximally symmetric space any longer, and we compare it fall off, we already notice that this is not Schwarzschild black hole if we are in a critical point. And problem with this critical point is that it is not, uh, limit is not continuous. I cannot study just, uh, for example, take limit alpha tends to alpha critical and reduce uh, this new solution to obtain this solution to the previous one. Because this is completely, this theory that you obtain, uh, I emphasize that because uh, somebody can start working with Einstein Gauss Bonnet and then finish with Chen Simons without knowing. And John Simons is uh, troublesome exactly because all formulas for conserved charges that are based on linearization, they fail. That's why uh, it is important to study that from the beginning, from the very beginning to choose alpha critical and to see what happened. So in general, you have this problem in uh, even uh, in higher dimensions, but in higher dimensions, you don't have Chen Simons because mass term is not constant, but it tends to zero. So there are still, okay, kind of uh, different black holes than uh, Schwarzschild ones, but uh, still they have kind of more similar properties. However, if you take dimension 2K plus one, uh, let's say in our case, we are in five dimensions and a uh, case two, because uh, you have only two factors, then mass term becomes constant. And this form of the metric function is exactly the same as for the BTZ black hole in three dimension. So these black holes are in fact known by Banyados um, 
Zanelli uh, and uh, collaborators, and they're called dimensionally continued black holes because uh, they have the same form, but now they're in Chen Simon's theory. Okay, so, uh, so the first step to, to obtain, first, uh, in general, uh, nonlinear corrections to general activity, they don't have so easily supersymmetric correction, supersymmetric extension. Uh, Gauss-Bonnet, it has something, but uh, in general, it is very difficult to supersymmetrize it. However, uh, trans Simons, in the critical point, you can supersymmetrize it in the following way. Just let, let me first rewrite uh, the whole action in first order formalism, only because we know that in supergravity, uh, supergravity is uh, best uh, formulated in first order formalism because fermions introduce torsion so we need them, yes, we need uh, uh, them presented in that way. So as always, we introduce like fundamental fields, field bind and spin connection and the curvature tensor and we have torsion tensor. Just rewriting previous section, <clears throat> uh, I can obtain, I can rewrite previous section like Trans Simon's anti Seeker gravity and it has this form. And now this is the point. This section is not just uh, Einstein Gauss Bonnet. When you fix all couplings in particular way in this critical point, uh, in fact, you extend the local symmetries for, from only local Lorentz, that is uh, Einstein Hilbert, to local, local ADS. And that's why, in fact, this limit is not continuous. That's why you, in fact, when you fix alpha, you change number of degrees of freedom, you change local symmetries, you change everything. That's why this is this continuous point. But the same thing helps you. You extend symmetries. Now you have a local antidesator, and there is a nice way to extend local antidesator to super antidesator. That, and this is how you get uh, trans Simon supergravity. So now you have torsional degrees of freedom, and in general, you have more degrees of freedom than just uh, Einstein Hilbert. And uh, there, there are different sectors of, uh, Einstein, of trans Simon's gravity, and one of them is topological. That means without degrees of freedom, similarly as in three dimensions. Okay, so. Let me now introduce uh, first uh, bright Einstein Hilbert action in a suitable Einstein Hilbert action with Gauss Bonnet term in a suitable form so that we can supersymmetrize it. Anti Deceiver group or SO24 group can be written explicitly by introducing uh, anti Deceiver generators, that means uh, Lorentz generators and uh, anti Deceiver translations. And uh, we can write, in this particular case, our gauge field uh, in a, this is now our gravitational field that become gauge field. This is not the case for Einstein-Hilbert gravity, where, where components are just the metric and uh, contortion written in first order formalism. And field strains defined in a similar way as in any gauge theory, as in Young Mills or any other. Now it has components that are torsion and anti deceiver curvature. So pure gauge solution is in fact global anti deceiver space with torsion zero and curvature constant. But you can have more general solutions, of course, that are not pure gauge. The Chen Simon section now that is just, I repeat again, this is just Einstein Gauss Bonnet with fixed Gauss Bonnet coupling. It can be now written like a, like a gauge theory, just like taking a trace with uh, some defining some symmetric invariant tensor of anti Deceiver group. And then you just take trace of a cubic term of a, AD, of a gauge field. So you can see that this cubic term is explicitly gauge invariant because it is a trace in the, in the group 
but also because FL are the forms, it is explicitly different with morphism invariant. So we have gravity theory defined like a gauge theory for some group. And we know that in three dimension, in fact, uh, general relativity and John Simon's gravity are the same, but in higher dimensions, uh, they're different. Okay, so the point is now, uh, let me just show you here. The point is now that I can just, you, you see what are ingredients of John Simon's action. If somebody give me gauge symmetry and invariant tensors, of this uh, gauge group or just any group and invariant tensors, I can define transimon action, action. So if I define anti the Sitter group, the, the only invariant tensor in any dimension is uh, this Levichivita symbol, but in three dimension, I can define exotic gravity because there are two invariant tensor and in some particular dimensions, uh, there are other type of uh, gravitational theories, but there is always one that is a kind of a direct generalization of uh, Einstein-Hilbert action. So uh, because uh, now, uh, because this uh, topic is on uh, holography, uh, this channel is about holography, even though I will not focus on holographic features of John Simon's gravity. In fact, there are some results that are very interesting. Uh, first, the point is that uh, John Simon's uh, gravity is uh, more complicated technically, because uh, if I take, for example, just uh, global anti the Sitter space, I cannot even linearize equations. These are equations of motion. I cannot linearize them, so my linear fluctuations don't have any dynamics because they're completely unconstrained by uh, linear equations because f is zero. So in fact, this theory is uh, intrinsically non-perturbative. I need at least a quadratic perturbation, quadratic. In fact, I cannot take small perturbation. I have to look always at the full theory. Uh, this is first feature. Another feature is that if I look from the point of view of holography, it has uh, new sources. And uh, so because we always have, uh, in fact, not always, but the gener generically we have uh, a torsion here. It means that uh, apart from the stress tensor, we have also a spin current that is sourced by fermions in dual theory. So we have uh, two set of uh, gravitational currents. So uh, there is a work by- uh, yeah, I, that, uh, Pratik, I was calling about the appointment for Dr. Shiva Elamba. Uh, excuse me, can you- uh, Sorry, I have to mute him. Yes, <laughs> just to turn off the microphone. Okay. Um, so if you now uh, look uh, at the holography, then, uh, we, know, we know that uh, one of the first results that you can get in holographic theory is to compute uh, anomalies that, uh, that appear, holographic anomalies that appear in a dual theory because uh, central charges are related to physical quantities and a number of and degrees of freedom of a dual theory. So if you try to do it for John Simons, uh, we did it in five dimensional John Simons uh, idea supergravity, and we reproduce a holographic uh, conformal anomaly or trace anomaly that was only of type A, but we also found that due to non-trivial spin current, uh, we could obtain something that looked like chiral anomaly, in fact that was related to the actual part of the spin current. So in fact, uh, holographic, uh, holographic description of uh, John Simon's gravity could give us some uh, new interesting uh, classes of uh, conformal field theory. But we haven't continued looking in this direction. Uh, so okay. Olivera, uh, may yes. I ask some? Uh, so, uh, of course. I so what is the general equation of motion for this theory? So, uh, okay, he, he, here it is. This is general. These are the general. Okay. This is in, in five dimensions. So in fact, this is, in fact, 
let me tell you even a better way, general equation of motion. I'm talking only about five dimensions. It is this, but L plus equal to L minus. It so this is equation. Again. So you see, you can, uh, you can, if you take spherically symmet typical spherical symmetric concepts to, to look at static solutions, you will get uh, these just uh, static black holes that I told you these are dimensionally continued black holes, but uh, you can have also other solutions where you, you have all components of the Riemann tensor mix up. You have like a wider class of solutions now because Einstein Hilbert, Einstein Hilbert has uh, all uh, just delta, yeah. in fact, has only this term yeah. here, does not have this one. Okay, so uh, now, uh, so if you have this particular combination, you're saying that you take any linear fluctuation that's trivial. So there is no linear. Yes. If yes. Exactly when you L cannot... plus is equal to L minus. Exactly. So it yeah. is not, do you see when you vary because F is zero, you don't have, you get zero equal to zero. Hmm. And now in principle, this is, it is just means you cannot look linear perturbations, but, but the problem is, but you have quadratic fluctuations, right? Quadratic fluctuations. Yes, yes, of course, there. of course, of course. It, it just you it just means you have to study like a quad other type of fluctuations. I mean, uh, at least quadratic, of oh. course. Okay, and so uh, what, uh, my uh, so the question that I, what I'm thinking is that you won't still call it topological, right? These kind of actions in the usual sense it of is the word topological. No, it, it, it is not topological because uh, there is a nice paper of uh, Banyados, Garay, and all, and they compute, they did Hamiltonian analysis and they computed number of degrees of freedom in a theory. And they found that it is not uh, zero any longer because in three dimension, Chen Simons and general relativity that coincide, they have zero degrees of freedom. But in uh, higher dimensions, uh, Einstein Hilbert always has, I think, d, d minus three over two degrees of freedom, and Chen Simons has much more degrees of freedom. But if you, if you, in, even if you eliminate uh, torsional, a lot of them are just torsional degrees of freedom. But even if you eliminate torsional degrees of freedom, if you decide to study only uh, non, only Riemannian degrees of freedom, then still you, it is not the same as uh, general relativity. But I wanted okay. to point out an, another thing. Uh, the point is that if you just imagine that you look some, like Einstein Gauss Bonnet is the most uh, kind of most common uh, generalization of uh, general relativity. And then you have uh, some charge formula like uh, any, and most of charge formulas are based on linearization. There are this conformal mass or, or there is a packing uh, method or any other method that you use, but they're all in somehow based on linearization. So when you apply, when you find black hole and you try to compute the mass, you will always get zero. Not because the mass is zero, but because uh, the formula is not valid any longer. So this is this was a big problem of uh, Chen Simons because not only Chen Simons of, of all theories in critical points because all formulas fail. You have to study them uh, from the beginning, but of course you can find the mass using Hamiltonian method. That is how they found it uh, originally. And also you can use Natter theorem, just not, not to not linearize anything. And also there are some paper where they use Natter theorem. So the theory is not, is, it is a very simple because it is just first thing that you do. You add just quadratic term, but in fact, if, you, if the coupling is critical, it, uh, it is in fact very complicated. And I think okay. it is really worth, worth of studying, yes. So I have a second question about this uh, slide. Uh, so ah. this, uh, uh, so these spin current and this stress tensor, they should also satisfy individual conservation laws, 
Of course, of course. Only now conservation, it is typical conservation law of Poincaré symmetry. I mean, law, in this case, ADS. But mm -hmm. uh, for example, conservation law, divergence of uh, stress tensor now is not a zero, but it will give something proportional to spin current and torsion. And, and yeah. the conservation, uh, and for example, there is conservation law that says that the uh, symmetric part of uh, stress tensor, uh, anti-symmetric part is now proportional to spin current. So, I mean, there are- Not the usual. Some, yes, yes. So there are conservation laws uh, well-defined and when you take spin current zero, it becomes just standard conservation law. So it is, uh, I didn't write it here, because finally I will use Hamiltonian method to compute uh, uh, cons conserve quantities, but uh, oh, you can write it. Yes, but it is really, it is really nice because uh, I told you that it still belong to the class of the kind of first modifications to gravity in five dimensions that you're going to take. In higher dimensions, Chan Simons is not quadratic, but uh, it is uh, more nonlinear. So it is not first thing that you would do, but at least in five, from the point of view of holography, you can really very easily finish in Chan Simons without knowing that. So- Yeah, this is quite beautiful because uh, there has been a lot of groups who are trying to construct uh, exactly. holographic tools. Of spin currents, as you know, recently, and there have been papers on it. Uh, so, so this spin current is, is, is this is John Simon's is no. very natural construct. No, but, but spin current is, uh, you have spin current even in, uh, in uh, Einstein Hilbert when you have Fermi, if you couple to fermions, because spin current yeah, that's right. is just, that's right. just consequence of existence of fermions. Of course, in yeah, yeah, but Simon's, you can they have want it to, even without uh, fermions. Exactly. So that's what they want. I mean, they want to have it through yes. the contortion, uh, just with okay, pure gravity I, or something. Let me just tell you something. In in uh, in uh, this paper, when we, it was just uh, there were no many papers. So in fact, there was no at all papers about torsion in the context of holography. So we took a toy model of uh, John Simons with U1 cross U1 symmetry to explore, to see what would be holographic theory. And in fact, we found that it was just chiral fermion and we reproduce uh, chiral anomaly and the uh, vector anomaly. I mean, it, is, uh, it was really simple exercise of only, I don't know, one page but it clarify many things and it is really beautiful example of holography in uh, Chan Simon's gra gravity. I, uh, I mean, I didn't uh, add it here because I wanted to talk about the new results, but uh, there, okay, you don't have spin current because you don't have uh, gravity at all. We just had uh, U1, U1 field. But you see, for example, how boundary term plays the role, uh, how symmetry breaks, how boundary breaks half of symmetry that is diagonal with respect to U1, U1. So it really clarifies a lot of things, uh, the mechanism of holography. Okay, so uh, let me now, now in fact, you see the trick. If you, if you just super, super symmetrize anti the sitter group, you will get super gravity, John Simon super gravity. Uh, so super one, like uh, supersymmetric extension, the most general supersymmetric extension of SO24 group is uh, SU22N uh, with N uh, direct fermions, dire N di Dirac uh, supersymmetry generators. So now, except of uh, ADS generators and supersymmetric generators, we, in order to close the algebra, we also need SUN generators, and there is one was uh, just a billion generator. And in fact, exactly the existence of this non-abelian part 
will produce kind of uh, sol solitons uh, coupled to black holes because we are, when we uh, find, okay, I didn't write, it. let me try kind of uh, write a bit. I don't know, I write it with a mouse, so I'm sorry if uh, handwriting is really ugly. But uh, these uh, uh, con dimensionally continued black holes have kind of uh, the, the following mask spectrum. If you choose, uh, if you remember metric function of this, uh, this is GT, GTT part, is, uh, has the form kind of M minus plus R square L square. No, sorry, minus R, R square. No, plus, I just forgot now normalization. Uh, let me see, it is one minus mu. Let me write like this. So, uh, or, or this, no, it is completely the opposite. Now, let me write, it is minus M, it is uh, draw, it is, I'm not used to this, it is minus this, kind of like, um, I'm not now sure. Let me write like this. Okay, so the point is that uh, when M is minus one, in fact, uh, in fact, then, I'm sorry, this was minus M, okay. So when M is minus one, you have global anti deceter metric, yes? Because global anti deceter is just uh, one plus R square L square for the metric. So this is uh, our ground state. However, if M is not minus one, then in fact, you have singularity of the curvature and it has horizon only above zero. So only here you have black holes and all the rest are naked singularity. So in fact, there is a problem because uh, what if you have black hole? In principle, black hole can somehow decay in a naked singularity that has lower energy. So there is a problem of stability of black holes. So in order to ensure that black hole is stable, in fact, you have somehow to ensure that you have, if you have supersymmetry, you can stabilize black hole just by showing that uh, there is a you find the BPS state and BPS state is always kind of minimum of energy for this class of the black holes. So this was our motivation to try to find the BPS state and to, to see if these black holes are stable. That's, this is why we were in fact looking. I have to raise that because otherwise it will always exist in um, in my slide, okay. So this is the idea. So uh, let me just tell you a few words more about John Simon supergravity. As I told you, uh, you, you just have to replace original anti deceter invariant tensor by any other invariant tensor. And beauty is that if you just give the tensor that is, that, that is fixed by the group theory, it gives you everything. It gives you kind of matter content and uh, interactions and you don't have freedom. You have finally only one interaction constant that is gravitational constant. And of course, in fact, two, uh, anti deceter radius, gravitational constant and everything else is fixed. So this is the beauty of the theory. And dimension of the algebra uh, is, uh, you can compute it, it is this, it depends on an SUN group chosen, but in general, number of bosons is not the same as number of fermions and uh, only in particular dimensions. I think uh, in, if N is uh, five or three, then you can choose that number of boson is equal to number of fermions, but in general, it is different. Okay, so these uh, fermions, 
Direct fermions have, uh, in general, they can have this U1 charge. And uh, here I just wrote uh, particular components of invariant tensor. I, I didn't want to be technical, so I tried to avoid uh, this uh, discussion, the, the, this writing of all tensors, of all Lagrangians, uh, otherwise uh, it would be, become extremely boring. And, but uh, you can see in our paper that is in fact uh, very long because of that. I think it has 70, 80 pages. Uh, you can see all the details and much more. Here, I just want to focus a bit more to physics to explain what happened. Okay, we chose n equal form for, because it looked like the simplest case uh, fermions become neutral with respect to this U1 group, but uh, they, are, they will still be charged by some subgroups of SUN. And U1 part becomes just central extension of the algebra. That was also simplification. And uh, in that case, this field uh, does not have kinetic term. So somehow it, it can still be topological, but in our case, it won't have play any role. We remain only with these two uh, algebra, SU4 and SU24. Beware that they are isomorphic. This is also big advantage. SU anti deciter is isomorphic to SUN. And in fact, uh, it, we, can, we will use this isomorphism to construct BPS state. Okay. So what is now uh, content, our field content of the theory? We have standard gravitational fields. We have fermions, but they have some non-abelian index. We have SU4 gauge field, and we have U1 gauge field that I told that it won't play any role. And no, uh, beware that I put index Q to, to uh, make difference between this abelian group and some other abelian subgroups that we will have from SU4 uh, internal symmetry, so just not to confuse them. And uh, I wrote here bosonic action because uh, I remember in one seminar I didn't write it and I misled the audience because they thought that SU and field is just young meals and it is not. He, this is John Simon's action for SUN group. Uh, gravity, you already know, gravity is just uh, Einstein Hilbert plus uh, Gauss Bonnet term. And this uh, U1 field, in fact, introduces interaction. It interacts with uh, gra gravity and with uh, non abelian field. So uh, even though this field is uh, non dynamical, this it plays really important role in, in because it introduces inter interaction between uh, non SU4 sector and gravitational sector. And then just for completeness, I added explicitly equations of motion. F is, uh, I didn't write it again, but F is uh, anti deciter curvature. That means RAB plus one over L square. EA, EB. That means it is a Riemann tensor plus a constant uh, curvature part. So when, uh, when a space is maximally symmetric, F is zero. Okay, so you see that here we have a pure like generalization of Einstein equation. Now it has torsional term and it has uh, interaction with U1 field. This is, uh, this is the equation of another gravitational equation obtained by variation with, with respect to spin connection. And uh, there are other two equations, one for U1 field and one for non-abelian. Okay, but in any case, we just take typical static spherically symmetric black holes and it turned out that uh, in order finally to get a solution, we need that this transversal section that is three-dimensional, it has some three angles, I call them theta here, that this, we chose it to be three sphere. 
So in general, of course, you can choose it because we are in anti deceiver space. Uh, it is allowed to choose even hyperbola or S2 cross S1 or S1 cross S1. So you can choose any topology. It is very interesting. But this one, uh, all, we focus to this one that will give us a nice solution. And for torsion, uh, when you take uh, spherically symmetric ansatz, and uh, then in general, you can have uh, again different sectors of uh, different branches of solutions, but some of them are ill-defined because uh, they don't have a well-defined Cauchy problem in the sense that for given initial conditions, you don't determine evolution uniquely and uh, we eliminated uh, these sectors. And one of the sectors that is well-defined is at least for gravitational part that is important to have well-defined uh, metric is uh, the ansatz for the torsional field that, that is given effectively in terms of two scalar fields one is completely anti-symmetric part of this transversal section and another is kind of trace. But finally, this trace we will, be, we will take uh, for study of uh, BPS states, we will take even this one to be zero. So in fact, only my, uh, completely anti-symmetric part of the torsion will play the role. Okay, so... Uh, uh, Here Oliver, just, yes. Uh, are there solutions also with the gauge fields on, like the U1? Uh, and, yes, uh, yes. And, yeah, uh, yes, there are solutions. In fact, several years ago with Gaston, we did kind of, uh, we, we studied solutions in Transimon supergravity, and, and we even got a solution that have U1 Q, this U1 charge with this index Q, and uh, they're different, even uh, black holes with two horizons that can be extremal. So there is a, there are some different di interesting solutions, but there are also solutions uh, that, um, that are ill-defined. And we in fact uh, understood why they're ill-defined. They have some additional symmetries, not only anti the seater, but they have some so-called accidental symmetries in that uh, this is kind of feature of transimon's uh, gravity that suddenly if you give certain initial condition you you can finish in a theory that has uh, completely disconnected from the rest of the theory that has different number of degrees of freedom and and uh, some of some of these sectors are well defined only different and some of these sector they are really not good. Well so you're saying there's some super selections. Yes, uh, yes. So you if you have, to, have a... yes, you have to be careful in transimons yeah. per gravity. So we were careful here uh, to to have a well defined problem, and even we computed number of degrees of freedom, and we understood dynamics in our sector very well. So one one more question. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, have you yeah, are there some other examples also with SU four gauge fields in this on top of this? Category? Yes, yes. In fact, there is a paper. Yes, uh, there is one paper also from uh, two thousand six, uh, where when I was working on my uh, PhD thesis with Jorge Zanelli. In fact, we found solution with only SU four fields. Okay, the point was, I told you at the beginning that uh, theory, when you choose ground state, F equals zero, and then you get that everything is non-perturbative. And in fact, uh, in this case, in five dimensions, there are some problems with John Simon's theory that is called irregularity problem because some, some uh, gauge symmetries become linearly dependent. So it is a problem. So it look at first sight like that you're forbidden to have a F equals zero solution because it is ill. And uh, in order to see if this is, to show that this is not true, in fact, we added uh, SU4, uh, or you can add SUN if you want, but uh, SU, we added SU4 matter 
and show that you can still have well-defined global ADS space, but you need uh, this SU4 matter that was even topological uh, somehow to keep your theory well-defined. And uh, in fact, uh, we also found VPS states and minimal energy Bogomolny bound. And uh, so there are, there are few examples. There are not many examples of the theory, but there, but some of them are work out with non-abelian field. But there were no, what I will present here, uh, this is first time that you find a black hole with non-abelian solution and they're coupled. They're really interesting configuration because you have black hole and two solitons kind of winding around solar uh, horizon that help you stabilize your black hole, not to decay into naked singularity. This oh, is- that's uh, quite beautiful, I see. Yes, yes. And this is kind of natural because SU4 field is part of transignments. It is not something that you add by hand to stabilize, but it is kind of minimal coupling like minimum of minimum that you could have. In that sense, it is good. And this is, I told you already, uh, that uh, these are dimensionally continued black holes that are known, but uh, they have this problem. And even below minus one, you have naked singularities. But here they're kind of conical type. And uh, here they're even worse. Some, who knows some, what kind of, Naked singularity it is. So the question was uh, whether this was the smallest black hole has even zero horizon, zero radius of the horizon. So the question was, uh, can you somehow ensure that uh, the cosmic censorship without uh, putting it by hand, but ensure that you're not going to make it singularities? And, and here the answer is yes. In fact, Camphora, Giacomini, and Truncoso show that if you add only this kind of a torsional, this is a torsional, a complete actual torsion, we call it because it is completely anti-symmetric part of the torsion. If you add only this, you can already stabilize black holes, but because this is only one soliton, but here we have two solid, when you add, non-abelian matter, you can have uh, also BPS states. And the question that, that you ask uh, references from 2014, that we found the uh, other black hole with U1 charge. But of course, uh, here we chose one case. We didn't do like uh, all possible cases that exist. So our goal now is to have uh, just black holes with uh, non-abelian fields and to see the mechanism. And to understand topology, it is easy to find solution, but it is uh, difficult to understand solution, to find its charges as, for example, here, they didn't find the charges nor anything because it is difficult. But here uh, we decided uh, to understand much better uh, this solution and to see all charges that it has. And, and funny thing it, with uh, black holes with these solitons is that uh, when you see asymptotic behavior, in fact, solitons usually appear with scalar fields and Hill torsion play the role of scalar field because completely anti-symmetric part of torsion is a scalar field in a five dimension. Uh, I mean, completely anti-symmetric part of, of transversal three-dimensional section. So when you take only radial, if you take uh, spherical symmetry, it depends only on radial coordinate. Uh, another funny thing is that uh, field strength here does not tend to zero at, a, at infinity, but it tends to a constant. And in standard gravity, this means that you have infinite energy. But here we prove, we show, we computed energy and it is finite. All divergences nicely cancel out and we have a finite energy. And you see that here we have four uh, kind of uh, integration constants, four charges. One that will be related to the mass parameter, 
uh, another that will be called, it will be effectively amplitude of actual soliton. And here you have two hairy pattern, gravitational hair, but we will take them to be zero because they don't give standard asymptotically ABS boundary conditions. They, and some of them, for example, produce singularities on the horizon or in the scalar field, and we don't want that. We want uh, the only singularity to be in the center of the black hole. So we take gravitational hair to be zero. Maybe there is some, but anyway, this solution is direct consequence of um, like you put initial condition and it comes at once. And you, you just solve equations, it is unique. Okay, uh, singularity is, as I told, only at r equal to zero. You can compute standard Hawking temperature. This is discussion. A horizon exists only if this extremality parameter is positive. Otherwise, extremality parameter measure the distance between two horizons, and it has to be positive. Otherwise, horizons disappear, and you get naked singularities. Uh, okay, so now we there there are solutions. I told you that we will take uh, we will eliminate gravitational here, but now we want BPS states. Here I just summarize our solution that is quite simple. You see, uh, the metric is just dimensionally continued black hole, and you have non-abelian field, and you have torsion. So the question is. Can you have BPS state? And if you see non equations of motion give you that non-abelian field has support only on the sphere. You cannot have uh, other components. So in order, we know, I mean, if you just start solving equations of motion, you will have too many components, like 70 co equations, it, it is a mess. So of course you have to be, be strategic to, to solve it. And then we know that uh, BPS states exist only if there is some topological quantity that will give central extension to the algebra. We know, we know for example, in Reisner Nordstrom black holes, U1 field is central extension. It is central charge of the algebra and Reisner, that's why in fact, uh, you get that um, from supersymmetry algebra, Bogomolny bound bounds mass by the charge. So in, in, in other examples too, we know that or central charge of that is usually topological charge, uh, such as winding number or some other charges that we need something like that. So we decided immediately to use the fact that the sphere uh, has the property that this uh, third uh, homotopy group of SU2 is an integer that is exactly case. This integer, in fact, uh, gives rise to the non-trivial, if you choose properly solution, if you find proper solution, it can produce winding numbers, yes. So our inspiration was this fact, because for example, third uh, homotopy group of SU4 or of U1 is zero. So we know that if we stay with unbroken symmetry, that we will have, uh, we cannot get central charge. So probably, of course, a winding number is not the only uh, central charge. You can have the other ones that like plus one and minus one. So they could still maybe give something, but we wanted to go something more likely and we broke symmetry. This was our inspiration to break symmetry from uh, SU4 to, S to SU2. And now if you take some table of, uh, of uh, this, how to break symmetry, what the way of uh, breaking, what are maximal subgroups? In fact, we found that depending on the representation uh, of representation chosen, you have two max, kind of two way to break symmetry. And one of them has maximal subgroup 
subgroup that is SU2, SU2, U1. We, this is new U1 that we called C because it will give kind of uh, complex, it corresponds to complex representation of uh, Dirac fermions. And it will give, in fact, non-trivial charge, U1 charge. That's why we added this, in. but this is not the same as U1Q that we had at the beginning. So, uh, of course, we, we don't need the 2SU2 group. So we just, in static, because in this case, you need also time dependence and uh, some more complicated solution for, for static solution. We broke symmetry in a really simple way. We just chose SU2 diagonal. That means linear combination of uh, parameters of uh, these ones and U1. And in that way, in fact, uh, looking at our three sphere, originally we thought that, uh, okay, later I will tell you about that. But in general, our three sphere not necessarily has to be three sphere, but we could do some identification. So if, for example, if you identify antifondal points, you can get uh, our projective space, for example, or if you, you can, uh, in that way, you can get a different uh, topologies. We even study both three sphere and uh, RP3 to see if there is some essential difference. And we found the difference is not qualitative, but only quantitative. Only values of the charges can be different, but qualitatively does not, situation does not change much. So finally, here I will tell you only about three sphere. Okay. Uh, explicitly, uh, my notation is, if we go directly from SU4 to the, uh, my generators for SU2 group are TI, like internal generator symmetry, and U1C. We found explicitly, I'm not going to bother you with the technical details. Here I just write an explicit solution. So you see that uh, gauge field has new integration constant that is B. And finally, you can, because omega and E depend on angles, you can see this kind of amplitude of the solution where uh, in different direction, maybe amplitude can be different, but still it depends only on one constant. And funny thing is that uh, field strain is not necessary, it is constant. You see, this is kind of uh, constant feels constant curvature, constant SU2 curvature to say, but it is not a zero. However, it includes sector B equal to one that correspond to pure gauge. And in fact, we study both cases and we found that when B is one, then we have only one half of supersymmetries broken. And when B is the more generic, then we have much more super, when we, then we have one over 16, uh, much more supersymmetries are broken. But not to show too many cases, I'm focusing now to be generic. That means this is not a zero because it is more interesting because it is different than Young-Mills. In Young-Mills theory, soliton has field strength zero in order to have finite energy. And then you, uh, you compute its structure, um, binding numbers and uh, energy, everything that you want. But here we were interested in a case like uh, less intuitive when a field strength is not a zero, but it is constant. We wanted to check whether we should discard the solution, whether they're really solitons or they have infinite energy. And then we were pleasantly surprised that in anti sitter space, uh, in John Simon's dynamics, it has finite energy also. And we also get U1 field that become pure gauge. We can set it zero, but when it is not a zero, it gives a nice uh, charge to the soliton. Okay. So I'm not, again, I'm going to jump this, not to bother you with uh, technical details, but the point is that here you have 
two integration constant related to solitons. One we call actual soliton because it comes from actual torsion and another comes from SU2 uh, from internal symmetry soliton. And in principle, they're independent, but they have the same form. And exactly when these two soliton match, when their amplitude match, we get BPS states. And it is really beautiful. So we, we require, we ask which supersymmetry, for which configuration supersymmetry transformations uh, remain unbroken. Epsilon is supersymmetry parameter. So we ask what are solutions of this theory for supersymmetry parameter? That means this is killing spin or equation. And we found, of course, we have to solve it. And then we found that BPS states are exact. In fact, this is surprising because we are not in standard gravity. So I thought that many features of standard gravity are features only stand of standard gravity and that Chen Simons supergravity will change them. But we were surprised first that BPS states correspond to extremal black holes. Okay, this is, it makes sense. But also we found that these two solitons have to have uh, equal amplitudes. That means that uh, when, when you, I will write topological numbers later, but in fact, it will give that total topological number finally is zero. So stable state is not where you have two solitons, but exactly when two soli soliton and anti-soliton unwind, because only in that way you have balance of forces because BPS states is equilibrium states where all forces should be zero. So it is also logic, soliton and anti-soliton unwind and uh, black hole is extremal. Uh, okay, Oliver? here, yes. Yeah, could you complete in five minutes because then we will have time for questions also. I agree. I will complete yeah. in five minutes. So I'm, I will jump computation of, this is just technical. I want to tell you in five minutes about charges. Okay, here we even, one question is whether this, it is sometimes easy to find the spinners, but the question is whether they're globally well-defined because local solutions can exist, but whether also globally they're well-defined and we found that they are globally well-defined. I just want to show you that, that we found topological charges. We found that this solution, let me just, okay, this is, this I want to show you. So we, we wanted explicitly to see this soliton. We didn't want to be abstract. So we found, for example, that the dependence on angles is like this. You see B is kind of amplitude of the soliton. And we computed topological numbers. So interesting thing is that B in amplitudes of the solitons are quantized by topology. They cannot take arbitrary values. They always have to give integer. And total Pontryagin number, so they have to be integer only because fundamental uh, homotopy group is uh, Z. But for ADS group, homotopy group is zero. That means that P is not quantized. This is total Pontryagin number. It remains it means uh, any real number. And this is the same as in standard supergravity. A topologic, kind of topological charges are quantized like electric charge, but the mass is not quantized. Here also this P square extremality parameter is related to mass and it is not quantized. So we were really shocked that everything is uh, different than in standard gravity, but very similar F physics is the same. BPS condition gives all charges are zero because this is equilibrium state. Okay, so I will jump everything and another important, because I want to tell you about uh, charges, just result to see again that this is logic, the same as topological number. For charges, it was troublesome I will 
stop dramatizing and go just to, to tell you which formula we use because uh, many formulas fail. And then we decided to go Hamiltonian charges somehow, oh, it is like the dirtiest one because you have to break covariance to compute it, but it is finally the most reliable. And then we found in fact, also very logic result we find exactly which parameter correspond to mass. And this is our final result. It is also, I will just show you this. Final result is that total energy is finite and it contains black hole mass, anti uh, vacuum energy of anti de Sitter space, interaction between uh, uh, with soliton and energy of soliton, you know, but because our soliton cannot fluctuate, it does not vary because C is quantized. You cannot have small variation of something that is integer. No, that's why in fact, soliton is practically vacuum. And the beautiful thing is that shock us pleasantly is that we expected, we found mass that is exactly the same. Each coefficient, 3K, P square L over mu square, like the one, that uh, Zanelli, uh, Banyados, uh, and uh, Tatelbaum found in their paper of dimensional continuum. In fact, in another paper in black hole scan, Zanelli and, and uh, Troncoso, and uh, uh, there was another author, but they computed it from thermodynamics exactly because all formulas fail. So there were they found which mass satisfy black hole thermodynamics. So this was kind of thermodynamics mass and not, and we computed it like Hamiltonian mass. And it really matches, even when you take limit torsion zero, you reproduce their result. Okay, so with this, all many things, uh, I just summarize uh, similarity, uh, similarities with standard supergravity, but I told you already. Uh, which are, I'm not going to repeat again, there are really a lot of open questions and additional results that I'm not going to bother you. I'm just going to thank you for <laughs> listening to me and uh, to say that, uh, that uh, this was financed by two grants. So thank you, please ask me uh, your question and I'm sorry if I extended a few minutes. Thanks, yeah, Olivera, then... for this beautiful talk and introducing us to this transthermal supergravity uh, and, uh, and these beautiful solutions that we have found. <laughs> so yes, it is very interesting solution. Yes. Yeah, so let's take some questions now from the audience. And... Uh, uh, hi, I have a couple of questions. Uh, so uh, the, all the BPS states you const constructed are one sixteen BPS, or the there are okay uh, we. No, we, we computed two BPS states. One, 116 was when field strength is not zero on the boundary, then it breaks more symmetries. But if you take pure gauge, then it is just one half BPS state. Okay. So, and maybe there are more. In fact, uh, I would just uh, say certain things. We chose static solutions and we broke symmetry that is not maximal kind of it does not span over all generators and as a consequence in fact our topological charge is just on triagin charge of three of four four dimensional topological charge effectively because if you eliminate if you take time uh, constant then you get you can reduce your manifold kind of to four dimensional euclidean space but this we know that this charge is not the one that enters Bogomolny bound because for Bogomolny bound, we, no, in fact, we expect that there should be another, there is another invariant, this one, that is kind of five dimensional invariant. But in order to have this different than zero, you need non-static solution and something much more complicated. But we were playing a bit in a paper and uh, it turned, it seems like that it is possible to get really something similar to uh, young Mills uh, to get some anti self dual solutions with this SU2 left and SU2 right subgroups. Of course, we didn't because our paper already has 
kind of 80 pages. We told, uh, no, no, we have to stop with this and to show results that we have. But really, for example, this is one of the important open questions. Another is, of course, to sh show explicitly this bound and to even to show explicitly, uh, okay, entropy is easy computed, but to show that it satisfies laws. Uh, can I ask a related question so to on. point? Yes, of three. course. Okay, so yes. have you shown that your uh, solutions, BPS solutions, solve, solve first order differential equations in order, rather than second order? Um, first, yes, this is like in standard supergravity. No, we haven't. In fact, we didn't. We didn't compute charge algebra yet. This is a work in progress. We but uh, uh, but uh, it seems like this looks pretty close to the n equal to four CA, right? So the central charge yes. structure, because you have SU four R symmetry. Yes. One, so it should be similar, right? Just putting all the central charges. That should yes, be yes. In fact, uh, you're right. Uh, in fact, uh, somebody. <laughs> already told me the same in my recent uh, talk uh, on that and I took the notes and I absolutely agree this is the first thing uh, it is very similar we should uh, have done that we should do it yes uh, I agree <laughs> okay Ayan can I ask one more question and then I stop yes okay. sure, sure, sure. Of course. No, so <laughs> I, I don't know much about uh, Chern Simon's gravity but my uh, what is the holographic dual to the say the let, let's take the five dimensional examples that you're looking at what is the four yeah. dimensional dual okay yes the the only result there are not many results on that and the only one that, that there is this is where i was caught or when i was learning holography and then we don't we did don't know what it is but we saw I told you, I mentioned at the beginning that yeah, the 2006 that, paper of yours, right? Yes, right. yes, that it had this uh, like chiral like anomaly. So there should be again some chiral fermions. And it is not strange because, for example, one of the results is that we got only type A anomaly of, uh, from conformal anomalies. And it is known that theories, in order to be unitary, they need both type A and type B holography, uh, sorry, anomaly. But what and do you mean Simons, by that? You mean the C and A, right? C and yes, A anomalies, it, it, right? Yes, yes, you need both, yes, you need both central charges at, from both type, not only the one associated to topological invariant, but also the one associated to conformal invariants. Yes, you need uh, two type of charges, but we got only one, John Simons has only one, and also it has chiral, it seems to be chiral anomaly. So it looks like it is not unitary theory it is, and it is just kind of part of uh, uh, kind of, yes, non-unitary. So I don't know what is the dual, but uh, the most likely uh, that Chen Simons needs uh, is just supplement to another theory in fact. Okay, thank you. That because because Chen Simons was used used usually to recover quant to restore quantum anomalies, <laughs> exactly because of these properties. So maybe here also, in case of theories, they have some quantum anomaly. You should add uh, Chen Simons to restore it, for example. But uh, but in fact, I haven't seen any other result on uh, holography in Chen Simons except of that and no, and maybe in fact because it was not very generic maybe finally type b anomaly can be uh, obtained in some another context because this was just pure ads gravity thank you okay so actually i have a very uh, simple question about uh, this if this black holes have some Hawking temperature, right? And uh, the usual semi-classical computation of Hawking radiation will fail because you do not have linearized perturbations. So uh, is there some semi-classical way one can understand the Hawking temperature after all here? Because the uh, usual... I, but uh, yes, I don't know, but here, here to compute temperature, I mean, I don't know, 
but uh, temperature should not uh, depend then only on uh, semi-classical computation. Here you get it in standard way, just asking uh, that uh, conical singularities are absent on uh, manifold. And you get also logic result that it is proportional to extremality parameter and for extremal black holes, it is zero. So it, in fact, it is, it is quite, uh, I mean, kind of logic and also it satisfy um, black hole thermodynamics. So any computation that uh, goes beyond the semi-classical approximation should work, but you have to include uh, higher corrections. Yeah, so basically you're appealing to the Euclidean picture but, then. That, yes, that I'm, is, yes, I'm referring to Euclidean picture. But, uh, but this is again the other question that I have here. If you, have the, if you refer to the Euclidean picture, then the horizon becomes a, a point and then in that case, uh, okay, I mean, still have the S3, but, uh, uh, but then you have this, usually do not have non-trivial charges at the, at the center because it's supposed to be a regular point. Uh, so- Okay, the, uh, this is, yes, this is about finally, this is just to obtain uh, temperature, but in fact, uh, we are just uh, doing standard in what I told today, just standard uh, static solution in uh, yeah. Lorentzian in a space. I mean, we don't do Euclidean continuation, but we are doing that. I mean, we compute- ah, Do you have a proper Euclidean continuation of the solution, which can then- Yes, yeah, yes. We comp in fact, we computed yeah, okay. entropy as volt charge, yeah. like okay, uh, volt charge- So with the, soliton, the with the solitons, you could Euclidean, if you do the Euclidean continuation with the solitons- Yes, of we the did, we did, yes. Yes, we didn't, we didn't do Euclidean continuation. Our solitons are just because it is static solution. Yeah. So that's why we got four dimensional kind of Euclidean space for constant right. time kind of reduction. But, oh, okay. uh, but I told you that uh, I think that we should have a extension that involves non-static solutions. It uh, strongly suggests everything we were already looking a bit, and it strongly suggests that it should exist. And this would be more interesting to see. Then it would be relevant if uh, we have Euclidean continuation, what is in Euclidean continuation and what not. Here, somehow it does not make. Yes, in fact, you cannot do Euclidean continuation. Sorry, if you have non-static solution. Yes, yeah. I don't know then. Yeah. Yes, how soliton would look like. Okay, uh, so thanks, Oliver. Again, let me introduce you to so that. that so uh, uh, I'm sorry, it was. Can I stop sharing in order to see yes. people that yes. are because <laughs> I, yeah. yes, I didn't. Okay, see I, I, I'm just stopping I, the recording now. Yeah, okay, thank you.